Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 78. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 7. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 7 website. Hey, we got to talk about the relationship between standard error and n. Hey, we've been talking about the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Let's see, well, we have a picture right here. Brrrp right here. There was a sampling distribution of the sampling mean. And we ought to talk about the relationship uh, between these two things. So let's just do some calculations. We have a mu of 2000, population mean, sigma, population 43, and we want to see what happens to our standard error, which is the standard deviation for our sampling distribution of the sample means, as n changes. I'm going to go ahead and highlight all four cells, and in this top light colored cell, I'm going to say equals, and our calculation for standard error is population sigma, standard deviation, divided by square root of our n, close parentheses. Now I'm going to uh, not control enter because that one is a relative cell reference. Boop. But that one needs to be locked, so I'm going to put my cursor there and hit my F4 key, Control Enter. Oh, as n gets bigger, the standard error gets smaller. Well, what is standard error? It's the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of the sample mean. When, st when standard deviation gets smaller, what happens? Uh, variation, d the dispersion gets much smaller. The values are more clustered around the mean. Now, let's see what happens to the probability. Because in our last video, we saw, uh, two vid yeah, the last video, we actually changed our n and saw that the probability dramatically increased given the same interval. So let's go ahead and do that here. Probability, now actually, we're going to have to, uh, I chose 8 above and below. So here's our upper and lower. X bars. So we'll do our norm dist. We'll do our upper first, always the upper, minus our mean, which is over here. Oh, I got my mu right here. Comma, the standard deviation, that is going to be, oh, and that's there also. So as that standard deviation gets smaller, what's going to happen to the probability? We've got to go uh, comma 1 because it's cumulative from the left. And then we need to subtract. We have the bigger one, right? So we have to take this, copy, and then minus 1, minus that. I pasted Control-V. Then I'm going to change this X, and then Control-Enter dramatically, just like we saw in the last video when we did it one at a time, uh, the probability dramatically increases that your particular, uh, for your interval, the sample mean will lie within that. Now, what is the uh, uh, 1 minus this equals 1 minus this? That's the probability that the sample mean will not be in your interval. Or it's the risk that our sample mean is not within our interval. I think I need to uh, double click that. Yeah, there we go. So it goes from, gets much, much smaller. So down here, the risk we run of, of not having our sample mean in that interval gets very small. And in chapter 9, we'll be, doing, we'll be dealing with this uh, all the time. Now, let's just look at the relationship here. We mentioned this in an earlier video. Standard error gets smaller as the sample size and gets bigger. This is useful because the probability that our sample mean will fall within our interval will increase. Probability increase as n gets bigger. Said in a different way, as our sample size gets bigger, the risks that are, and I'll have to double click right here, the risks that our sample mean will not be in the acceptable interval will go down. Particularly that last little bit will help us in chapter 9. All right, uh, relationship between standard error and n when we come back, our last video for this chapter on proportions. See you then.